Hello, my name is Jonathan Parker. I am your political science teacher for the semester. The purpose of this video is, is just really to lay out the syllabus and course expectations because nothing is really ever settled at the, the college level until after the first day of classes. So I don't know how many late registrants I'm going to have uh, or how many people are going to change off the roster I've got currently, but just um, to be safe, you know, so I don't have to give this talk a million times, I'm making this video so I can point you in section 1582 to uh, this YouTube video and, and say all your questions will be answered there. So my name, again, Jonathan Parker. Uh, you'll have me for the next 16 weeks. Uh, this Canvas page, uh, I know that a lot of instructors uh, really use Canvas, I mean, to its fullest potential, and it's just like rah-rah Canvas. I do not. Um, Canvas for us is going to be more of a, a kind of a file dump. Like here I've got material for test one. I'll put up PowerPoints and uh, articles and other things that'll be on your first test. That's really about the extent that we're going to be using Canvas. You know, obviously you'll see, you know, your grades. I will input the grades. Uh, I, I, unless I'm out for some reason, we're not going to be using discussions or anything like that. Uh, so, you know, um, like right here, what I'm really getting at is if you see right here, I've got due dates coming up for summer final exams for my summer sections. Uh, don't don't really expect that. Come to class. I give assignments in class. I give readings and other things in class. I'm very much a teacher of the old school. Uh, if you don't like that or if that's something that doesn't work for you, uh, I'm probably not the guy for you. All right, but I think if you stick with me, you're going to have a lot of fun uh, and maybe learn a thing or two. So look under modules. That'll be really the, the, the primary 90% of the time thing that, that the course material is going to be under. Uh, announcements, not really used again except if I, if I cancel a class. Um, I'll email to my office hours. I'm located on the East Peoria campus in room 216C. I'm only on campus as of right now. Again, nothing is official until after the first day of school, Tuesday and Thursday. Uh, if that changes, I will let you know. All right, so we'll click on syllabus. The course syllabus is right here. Everything, I think, is laid out rather simply. Uh, again, it's a very Spartan uh, Canvas page. So uh, there, there's you know, not, not a lot of places you need to go to find things. So my email, jonathan.parker at icc.edu. First place we're going to stop. My name, right here. My name's right there. My name's on the course page. People for years now have been spelling my name J-O-H-N or J-O-N-A-T-H-O-N or J-O-H-N-A-T-H-O-N or whatever, and then getting mad at me because the emails don't come through. Well, I typically will ask them, well, did you spell my name right? So please spell my name right. I want to read your emails. I want to answer your questions. I want to help you. Uh, so help me to do that by actually directing your questions uh, at me. There was another Jonathan Parker who was uh, in the campus police department. I think he's gone now, but he probably ended up getting a lot of my emails. So again, my office is 216C. My office hours are Tuesday, Thursday, 115 to 245. I can't do any earlier than that um, because I have three classes. I see you guys first, then have a
comparative politics class and a state and local government class, so I'm going 9 to 115. So other office hours by appointment only. I will hold extra office hours via Zoom if that is something that you're into. Uh, and just to clarify, that won't happen if we can't coordinate a meeting. So if your schedule is X and my schedule is Y and there's no meeting place, then you know I've got a life too. So, uh, but if we can both meet on uh, Tuesday at 6 p.m. over Zoom, great, let's do it. Uh, so if you have any questions, comments, or concerns during the semester, please reach out by email, come to my office. I've been here six years now at ICC. I think maybe nine people have come to my office hours. It gets very lonely down there. Uh, but remember, you know, teachers cannot read minds. I won't know that you're having difficulty unless you tell me. Reach out if you need help. I promise I don't bite. I'm not the boogeyman. I want to help you. I know some of this material is new. Some of this material confuses some people. I want to help you understand and get the most that you can out of the 16 weeks we have together. So I'm available by email otherwise, and we'll endeavor to get back to you within one business day of your inquiry. So if you send me an email on Monday, it'll be answered by Tuesday at the latest. An email sent on Friday, since the weekend is not a business is not part of the business week, thankfully. Uh, I will, you'll have an answer by the following Monday. Probably sooner than that, I am um, not good at leaving work at the door. So I am on here uh, more than what I'm saying I am. So you might get, if, if you get a email off on off to me on Friday and I answer it on a Saturday you've gotten lucky but you probably will get an answer that weekend all right uh, I won't read the course description to you I won't read the general information uh, materials of instruction so O'Connor Karen and Larry Sabato American government roots and reform 14th edition Pearson 2022 here is the book all right uh, the, the, I, ran, I don't know if the bookstore is corrected this or not. I have to look into it. Uh, the, there was some confusion uh, a semester or two ago about the bibliographic information that I provided and what the bookstore is selling. The bookstore is selling this. The bookstore is selling the right book. If you can find the book cheaper online, Amazon, any of the, the third-party vendor sites, anything like that, you're, you're welcome to uh, buy the book there. Uh, we don't need it right away, right away. So uh, this is like the, the wish list for if Parker had, you know, the curriculum writing powers and, you know, 16 weeks in which to teach a class, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, the Virginia Statute of Religious Freedom, Washington's Farewell, Eisenhower's Farewell, Federalist and Anti-Federalist Papers. Uh, I will do my best to get through all of these. Again, this is just kind of my wish list of what I would do if I had my way. Um, we, we usually only get through three or four. So course policies. Uh, if you need to get a hold of me outside of class or my office hours, please utilize the email address listed at the top of page one of the syllabus. I will try to respond to all emails within 24 hours. I will not answer an email sent on Saturday or Sunday until the following Monday, except sometimes I do. Again, as I, as I think I've said, I'm, I'm very bad at checking work uh, at the door. Uh, plan accordingly. So don't count on it, but I would probably respond to an email before Monday. I will not, however, and I don't bend on this, accept any electronic forms of submission for classwork. Everything you hand in must be a hard copy that you print out and bring to class. As I said, I'm old school. That's just the way it is. If you're sick, email me to let me know you're ill and 
when you can do so when you're healthy, bring a hard copy of your work to the next class you attend. It's as simple as that. Don't email me anything. People started emailing me stuff uh, around the pandemic, and I ended up losing a bunch of assignments, and it was terrible, and I swore it over again. So I've gotten emails in the past stating something to the effect of I can't come to class because I need to study for a test I have later. I'll turn in my work next class. This was an email I, I did get. So take it from me, you're not going to be turning anything in if you send me something like that. Uh, advice, learn to lie a little better. You know, turn in, you know, this is just blatantly uh, insulting to me and any other professor you might choose to send it to. So do not, uh, you know, come up with a, with a better excuse as to why you can't turn X, Y, or Z in. Academic citation etiquette. All right, I'm big on this. Whenever you turn in a written assignment, you're required to cite your source. If you use a direct quote from a book, article, website, you paraphrase a chunk of text from the book, article, website, you present a theory, article, or argument, excuse me, opinion that doesn't belong to you. It's okay to acknowledge other people's ideas. You need to do it. Uh, at the end of your written assignments, you are required to provide a list of sources that you have utilized for that assignment. Uh, this is an exception. When we work out of the book, I, of course, I know where you got the uh, information from. You don't need to cite the book. So we're going to use the latest MLA format and inline citations for this class. Uh, you're, you're not stuck with easy bib. I, this is just a a citation uh, generator that I've used. I know there are a ton of others, so whatever one works for you, use that. So this is easy, you know. You have to view an ad now to get a citation for free, but the site still works. So you click on Create Citations uh, button on the first page of the website. You follow the steps. It's very intuitive. Uh, you shouldn't have a problem with it. Uh, inline citations are also expected in any writing assignment that you turn in where you have used outside sources. Now, if you do a book assignment for me and you use outside sources because you're an overachiever, you need to cite it. You don't need to cite the book, though. So general guide. I, we've been using these books long enough that I, I know I could probably tell you the book in my sleep. Uh, if you have any doubts about whether something needs to be cited, just create a citation for it. Don't take chances with your grade. I had a guy once um, write a term paper for me, and the term paper, uh, I had him watch a YouTube video and answer some questions. Um, it's actually still a, still a prompt uh, at the bottom. But he turned in a term paper about five, six pages long with every comment that the video had received, and he didn't understand why that was wrong. So, I mean, there, people, you, you have all sorts of uh, levels of understanding in my experience with what plagiarism is and just cite your sources. I've never taken off points for somebody overly citing something. I just, you know, circle in red and say, yeah, you didn't need to cite that and you learn for the next time. All right. Wikipedia is not an academic resource. Wikipedia is not an academic resource. Wikipedia is not an academic resource. Do not cite Wikipedia in any work that you do this semester. It will negatively impact your grade. How badly? Why don't you cite Wikipedia and find out? Don't do it. So, on page 24 of the Student Rights and Responsibilities Handbook, there are multiple forms of academic misconduct listed. To sum it up, if you choose to engage in academic misconduct or plagiarize, the handbook says this. Based on the severity of the offense, the instructor may recommend failure for an assignment or failure for the course. Multiple instances of academic okay. misconduct could include sanctions up to dismissal from the college. I have had to deal with this every semester that I've worked at this college. 
and I expect I'll probably have to deal with it this semester too. This has been an issue. The first time I catch you plagiarizing, I will give you a zero, whether it's a 10 point assignment or a 150 point test, you get a zero. And you don't get the opportunity to redo it. The second time I catch you plagiarizing, I fail you for the course. That's it. I've never had to get to that, the class or the person or whoever it is usually learns their lesson after they get the zero. Late submissions. As a rule, I don't accept late work. However, you know, the standard exceptions, sometimes things happen if uh, an illness or a death, you know, or, you know, I, even you were waiting for the plumber or something like that. I, you know, I am a human being with a life and a family too. I understand that, you know, some things um, need to happen, you know, during a day, you know, mom or dad might not be home. You need to wait for the electrician. Okay. You can't make it to class. Um, just make sure you talk to me, make sure that you have proof of what you said happened did in fact happen. And we can probably work something out. If you come to an ex me with an excuse, like with like, uh, I went to Taylor Swift concert last night, or I had other homework to do, you're not going to be turning in anything. We have a standard 10 point grading scale. Once you read F, uh, your grade. So it's 80, 20, the final is exam is 20% of your grade. So everything we do throughout the semester is 80%. Uh, two tests, pretest and a post-test. If you're a late registrant and you haven't taken the pretest, uh, make sure I get that to you the next time you see me in class. Uh, attendance, a term paper, a mini speech, federalist, anti-federalist assignments, uh, book assignments, classwork, homework. That's just the, the other stuff that uh, might be done over the course of the semester and maybe a college mandated essay. Uh, I have to check if that is something that I need to do this semester. And the final is 20% of your grade. All right, evaluation of student achievements. I'll let you read that. You can click on these uh, on your own time. I tried to keep it fairly centered. That's getting harder and harder to do. Uh, I mean, I know this is kind of right wing and this is a little left wing. You know, it, it, I tried to balance it out as best I, I could. So miscellaneous. Uh, I do not advise taking a test and then forgetting about the material. That's not one of this. This, is, this class is not one of those classes. I have arranged this course so that one topic builds on another. You'll be hearing and dealing with everything we study throughout the semester. Keep your notes and study, study, study. A subject like federalism, hint, hint, might appear on test one and then again on test two and then again on the final. Uh, it is not my responsibility to chase you down to make sure you're keeping up with your work. Um, some students in the past have thought that it was. If you miss a class, ask me, ask a classmate, whoever, uh, what you missed. If you choose not to do this, don't be surprised if you start seeing a lot of zeros on Canvas. I have a lot of students. I, I, I am not going to know if you were absent, really, so you just you have to tell me. Uh, you're expected to attend class each week. Attendance is defined as completing homework, uh, completing classwork, attending lectures, there's a 100 point grade attached to you showing up to class to encourage attendance. So I'm going to have a binder in the front of a class, the class with an attendance sheet in it. It'll have all your names and some room at the bottom in case anybody registers late. Uh, everybody's name is there. It's your responsibility to sign in at the beginning of each class. And it's as easy as walking up there, finding your name. Okay, Jonathan Parker, just initialing JP. All right. You're in, you're getting the points for the class. This is also for reporting purposes when the college asks me to mark who the never attenders and non attenders are. If you don't sign in for a class, you weren't present. That's just the way it has to be. I have a lot of students. I'm, I'm not going to know you were there if you don't sign into the binder. So that's your way of, of letting me know. We meet on Tuesdays and Thursdays. I'm not going to remember if student X was sitting there 
the previous Tuesday when we come back to class the next Tuesday. When it comes time for me to determine attendance, all I do is open up the binder, okay, section 1582. He was here, he was here, he was here, she was here. And I look at Canvas, all right, they've been turning in assignments. You can't miss lectures and not turn in homework and expect to stay in and succeed in your course. That's, you just can't. Uh, the college handbook states that 5% of classes missed during the semester constitute an excessive number of absences for a class and may merit being dropped. 5% of classes constitute approximately one week. That's a Tuesday and a Thursday for us folks. That's it. That's 5% of the class. This will be the guideline I will use when determining non and never attenders. I have had to drop students in the past for excessive absences. I don't want to repeat the practice. I, I don't. I did not get into teaching to drop students and give students F's and all that. So I, you know, don't make me do it. Uh, come to class. That's it. Come to class. Take away from the syllabus. Just keep an open line of communication with me. All right, and you will be just fine. If you let me know what's going on, I can help you. You'll learn something from this class. You may even just enjoy yourself. Crazier things have happened. This is our projected course schedule. We'll get through kind of Unit 1 by September 28th. That'll be the first test. Test 2, November 9th. And then the rest of the semester is this. Uh, we very rarely get to... Uh, finish the syllabus. It's just the classes um, usually have a lot of good questions about material and you know it, it prevents me from <laughs> finishing uh, the syllabus out because I'd like to answer your guys' questions and not leave you wondering. Uh, final exam. I'm honestly I'm not sure because the site just says right now that the semester ends December 15th, so I'm not entirely sure when the final is, but it'll be in our classroom. So, first day of class, Monday, August 21st, you'll see me the next day. Uh, Labor Day, Monday, September 4th, Thanksgiving break, the 20th through the 26th, and then the semester ends December 15th. All right. Guest lectures. Uh, I like to bring in the learned people with practical political experience uh, to talk to you guys. Uh, you get sick of the sound of my voice. Uh, I get sick of the sound of my voice too. Um, after I've been talking for a long while. And if that can be arranged this semester, I'll make it happen. Now here's the deal with people I may or may not be bringing into class. Uh, they don't charge me. I've worked in the political field for long enough that I have contacts. Um, the contacts are of all political stripes, persuasions, and all sorts of roles. Uh, they just don't charge. That's it. I'm not trying to indoctrinate. I've been accused of that. I'm not trying to do anything uh, other than give you guys a different point of view than you might otherwise be used to. So that's the big reason. Guest lectures don't charge. I don't get a budget to bring in guest speakers. So buddies sometimes owe me favors and I'll call one in with this. Uh, the instructor reserves the right to add or subtract from any part of this syllabus as the semester progresses. He will make every attempt to notify students of changes during regular class meetings through Canvas and or through email. Um, I, I, I'm not thinking right now of a time I've ever added anything to a syllabus, so it's only been subtractions. All right, then we have planned assignments, uh, the mini speech, and you can read through this on your own. Uh, I will just point out, you know, students come up and ask how. Will I be graded? Okay, the rubric's right here. It's just not in rubric form. Did you stand up and deliver a three-minute speech? Check. Did I think? Do I think that you practiced what you said beforehand? Check. 
Did you turn in a typed outline to me? Check. Did you turn in a correctly formatted bibliography documenting your sources? Uh, using Wikipedia as a source will automatically lose you five points for this category. Uh, Federalist and Anti-Federalist Papers. Now, uh, the Anti-Federalist Papers, I will give you a little later on in the semester when we get to uh, that assignment. But um, the Federalist Papers you can find right here, congress.gov. All right, we're only going to be reading a few, but 47 uh, 49, 50, and 51. Um, so I give you the worksheets also right here. This is how I want it done. The Federalist Paper Analysis Worksheet, uh, the Anti-Federalist Paper Analysis Worksheet. It's a little different. And their due dates. So just remember um, that this assignment, fill out a worksheet for every Federalist and Anti-Federalist paper assigned. Students have gotten Fs in the past because they haven't read the directions and chose a single Federalist paper to analyze. Uh, also a problem that I run into is I have I used to have this labeled as Federalist Paper Assignment 1, so a student would come and think that they only had to analyze Federalist Paper Number 1. Not the case. So, again, read that on your own. Uh, I've given you the highlights, and let me know if you have questions. So book assignments, these are what we've got planned right now. Three of them, 30 points each. And then the term paper. This is the big one um, that I assign that everybody likes to write the last week of class. Rough draft is due Thursday, October 26th. Final draft due no later than the last day of class. You must also turn your rough draft back in so I can see what changes you've made. Um, so I give you options here. I'm the Magna Carta, Daddy of Stevens, and a President or First Lady of Biography is what is on offer this semester. I change it up from time to time. Um, so read the requirements. You know, I'm not trying to get you. I just, you need to do some writing. You're in college. While this is not necessarily considered a writing intensive course, we do have to do some. All right, so that is uh, the syllabus in a nutshell. Now, people have said to me in the past, Mr. Parker, your syllabus is confusing. I don't know when things are due. Okay, here's an assignment calendar and due dates for everything we've got planned in sequential order. You know that we're having test two on Thursday, November 9th. You know test one is Thursday, September 28th. And that is that. So if you get confused, look on page 16, and that'll tell you what's up. Am I forgetting anything? I don't think so. So, um, if you made it this far, congratulations. Two things, if you're a late registrant and watching this, the next class you see me, you need to get for me the syllabus quiz and the pretest. You need to get those two from me next time you see me. All right. I hope I didn't scare anybody off or bore anybody to death. I will see you next class.